our Gospel Matthew, chapter 19, of verse 16. Now from verse 16, I'm going to read it. Now, behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. But if you want to enter uh, into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as, you, as yourself. The young man uh, said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give it to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen. Yeah, I read them today. A couple of weeks ago, I met one pastor from Salvation Army Church. Uh, we had a conversation for about uh, one hour. The topic was about uh, our ministry because he was also pastor. We also pastor. So we talked about our uh, ministries and then we talked about uh, our brothers and sisters together. As we were sharing our conversation, this pastor Pastor Pili told me about one of his congregation. She was a bit old. She was a bit old. No, she is a bit old. She is about 80s, in her 80s. 80s are a bit old, right? Yeah. And then she's been to the church for her entire life, which means for... Mm -hmm. 80 years. But pastor, the pastor told me about the conversation with that old lady. Somehow, he was able, this pastor was able to have a uh, chance to talk with this uh, old lady. After some a casual chat, he asked her, asked her about eternal life and going to kingdom of God. So this pastor asked her, okay, sister, are you sure about going into the kingdom of God? Are you sure about your eternal life? When he asked this question, the old lady said, answered, I hope so. I hope so. I stopped the, uh, his saying. So, and then I asked this pastor, pastor, the older lady said, I hope so. After, after 80 years of church going, right? She, her best answer was, I hope so. Hopefully, I think so. Which means she was not sure. Am I right? Which means she has no assurance in her heart. It was not the faith, right? What is the faith? Faith is, I know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. 
I know I will, right? I will be, I will go here and there. I know tomorrow will be Monday. You all know that, right? Are you sure about that? Tomorrow will be Monday? How do you know? The tomorrow hasn't come yet. But we are pretty sure, right? We are pretty sure. Tomorrow will be Monday. Okay, the, the faith of salvation, I believe, is like that. It's like that. Surely, 100%, surely, tomorrow will be Monday. Just like that. I know I'm going to kingdom of God. I know I will say I'm saved. I know I'm a child of God. That is a faith. But she has no faith at all. That's why she barely said, I hope so, hopefully, I think so. Those kind of answers. So I asked this pastor, Pastor, you know what the problem is? Yes. He said, yes. Okay. In this case, it's whose fault? What was the problem? And the whose fault? Her own fault? Or we ministers, our fault? Or the system of the church, the church's fault. Whose fault? Whose fault? He couldn't give me the proper answer. But he said, maybe our minister's fault. And then maybe there are some problems in the church system. Yes, pastor. We need to preach the gospel together. We need to, we have to preach the gospel together. Starting from the people in the church. You understand? Okay, so most of people who go to church, they think and they believe, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. Why? I go to church. Okay, even today, today is Sunday, so you are here. Not in front of the Netflix, right, on Sundays. Not in front of, yeah, the cinema. Not in front of, not in your bed, right? But you are here in the church, in front of the words of God, in front of pastor. You want to, you are here to listen to the words of God. That's why you think like, okay, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. But you know what? You know what? The Satan is so clever. The Satan is so clever. Bible says that Satan is a great liar. It's very good to deceive us. You know that? It is very good to deceive us. No, when Satan deceives us, when Satan leads us to eternal punishment, he uses, it uses some uh, methods, some weapons. One of the most important uh, weapons is, you know what? Religion. Religions. I think one of the greatest inventions is the religions. Re uh, re invention of Satan is what? Religions. There are many other religions in the world, right? Buddhism, Muslim, Hinduism, Judaism, and then these are majors. These are majors. There's so many minor religions. There are so many. You know how many religions in the world? Do you know how many? Don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But as we know, thousands of thousands of religions, right? Religions. Some believe this, some believe that, some believe that, some believe that. Yeah, that is one of the good the weapons. Mm -hmm. Good ways to lead us to lead us to eternal punishment. And then you know what? What else? What else? The church. Using the church benches. Can you believe that? The Satan deceives us using the church chairs. You know what I mean? Because so many people, as long as they are on the church 
chairs, church benches. They believe I'm a believer, right? I'm a Christian. But you know what? Although you are on the church benches, you are sitting on the church chairs every Sunday, it can, it's not guarantee. It's not guarantee for going to the kingdom of God. You got to know that. Okay? So this faith is very individual. So you got to have faith. You got to have right faith. Okay? Faith about the gospel. Faith about Jesus Christ. For that, you got to understand what the right uh, gospel is. Gospel is. Okay, nowadays, in Christianity, there are so many different kinds of denominations and churches. You know that? Presbyterian Church, Baptist Church, Methodist Church, Church of England, and Roman Catholic, and then Pentecostal, full gospel. What else? What else? Jehovah's Witness. What else? What else? Mormon. <laughs> Mormon. And what else? Yeah, Sabbath, Sabbath Day Church. Right? Sabbath Day Church. And then what else? Good News Church. <laughs> which you belong to, right? Which you belong to. Good News Church. Okay, which church is true? Which church is true? No, why? There are so many different kinds of churches, different kinds of denominations in Christianity. You know why? Okay, first reason is uh, geographical reasons. Some uh, group of churches are start from different locations, right? Okay, let's say Church of England. There's no Church of England in Korea. Uh, just a few, I know, as I know, just a few churches, Church of England churches in Korea. Not many, right? So Church of England, it's one of the denominations, right? Why it is called the Church of England? It starts from England. Am I right? Yes, that's why it is called Church of England. And the Church of Scotland, Church of Wales. Right. If you go to uh, Scotland, many church of Scotland, Scotland, okay, and then yeah, because of uh, where it starts from, because of a uh, geographical difference, okay, different kinds of denominations and churches, and then also, you know, what is the reason of so many different kinds of churches? Who starts? Yeah. Based on who starts, based on the founder of the churches, right? Founder of the churches. And then some historical difference, historical difference. But you know, what is the most important reasons of these uh, various kinds of churches? How to interpret the Bible. Every church say, every church says, we believe in the Bible. Am I right? And most of the churches, they use the same Bible. I know some churches, they use different kinds of a Bible. Let's say Roman Catholic. They use different kinds of church, a Bible. Do you know that? Compared to our church, our Bible. Yeah, their Bible is a bit different. Okay? Roman Catholic. Please trust me, okay? <laughs> Their Bible is different. And then also some other church group, they use different Bible. But most of church group, most of churches, they use very similar or same Bible. Am I right? Although all of us, we say we believe in Bible and we read the same Bible, but still, Many different kinds of churches. Why? There, there are some differences about how to interpret. How to interpret. 
right? Some church, some denomination says this interpre interpretation is right. And some group and some church said this interpretation is right. Because of difference of interpretation, right? That is one of the most important reasons of these various kinds of churches. Brothers and sisters, when you interpret the Bible, there are two different kinds of interpretations. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16 of verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the, from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Okay, from this moment, Jesus started to talk about uh, his sufferings and he will be killed and he will be resurrected, right? When he talked about it to his disciples, one of his disciples, Peter, you know what Peter said? Look at the verse 22. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall, this shall not happen to you. When Peter heard it, he was shocked, right? Because Peter, he gave up all his previous life, and then he started to, started to follow Jesus Christ. But that Jesus Christ told him to, yeah, talk to him about, yeah, I, should, I will be killed. No, no, you can't. You can't, right? So Peter said, no, far be it from you, Lord, and it shall not happen to you. No. Okay, it sounds like very kind, right? It sounds like what Peter said. It, was, it sounds like very kind, very generous. Am I right? But when Peter said that, look at the verse 23. Let's read it all together. Begin. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. When Peter said that, Jesus said, Get behind me, you Satan. Okay, say, uh, Peter, all of a sudden he became Satan. Get behind me, you Satan. You are not mindful of the things of God, right? But you are mindful of the things of man. Peter, when he heard it, he, he thought about from his own perspective. You understand what I mean? From his own views. But he didn't consider about God's perspective and God's side. Okay, to Peter's side, to Peter's perspective, Jesus being killed, Jesus, right, suffering, was it good or bad? Not good. Not good. That's why he said, no, 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 you can't, right? You can't. It shall not happen to you. Yeah, to the eyes of Peter, it's not good. But what about God's side? What about God's eyes? Is it good or bad? Is it good or bad? Okay, Jesus Christ died on the cross. His crucifixion and his re resurrection, is it good or bad? In God's eyes, without, without his crucifixion, without his re resurrection, you are still in sin. You know that? That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, right? If there's no crucifixion of Jesus Christ, if there is no uh, His resurrection, you are still in sin. Without His death, without His resurrection, no way to be saved, right? To be killed, to give up His life. For that reason, Jesus Christ, He came to us, amen. 
So it was good. It was the will of God. It was the will of God. Through all those things, God is going to save all of us. It's good. But Peter, he didn't consider about God's thought. God's eyes, right? He heard it from his own eyes. Brothers, and you understand what I mean? Yeah. Jesus said, I'll be arrested. I will go through many sufferings from elders and chief priests. And then I'll be killed. And then in three days, I'll be resurrected. When Peter heard it, he heard it from his own perspective. That's why he said, no, you can't. No, you can't. It shall not happen to you. Don't worry, I will protect you. <laughs> I will keep you. Don't worry about it. That's why <laughs> when the Roman soldiers came to arrest Jesus Christ, he took out his sword, right? To protect Jesus Christ. Don't worry, Jesus Christ. Don't worry. It shall not happen to you. I'm a Peter. I will protect you. Sounds good. Sounds very generous and kind. But you know what? It was going against the will of God. Okay, when you see the things, you can see the things from your own perspective and from God's perspective. You understand? So when you listen to the words of God, when you read the words of God, you can interpret it from your own side and from God's side. If you want to understand the right meaning, right meaning of the Bible, you got to see from God's perspective. You understand? If you see, if you read the Bible from your own views, from your own perspective, you will, you can interpret it in the right way. That's why some people ask me this question. Pastor, yeah, I read some Bibles, and then I made the decision not to believe in God. Okay, why? When I read Bible, but God is so cruel. <laughs> He's so cruel. He killed so many people. I don't want to believe that kind of God. <laughs> okay. Have you ever heard those kind of saying? Right? God punished and God killed John, no, Genesis chapter 6 because of the wickedness. God struck this whole world with flood, right? God killed every population except for eight of them. Apart from eight of them, God killed whole population with the flood. Pastor, don't you think it's too much? <laughs> don't you think it's too much? Yeah, I want to say it's too much. Why? When I see it, when I read it from my own perspective, I got to say it's too much, too much right? Let's say, sometimes, <laughs> Helen, today she boasts about her grandchildren. Yeah, I understand. They look very cute, right? <laughs> they look very cute. Yeah, once I had very good, uh, cute boys, <laughs> once, <laughs> but they are no longer cute anymore. I'm so sorry for that. But can you believe once they were so cute? Can you believe that? I know, <laughs> you can't believe, you can't imagine. But think about it, Helen. One day, one of her child, uh, grandchildren didn't obey to Helen. Mm -hmm. Helen said, stop it, be quiet. But it, he or she makes noise continually because of the, if, what if she, <laughs> what if she, punish them with very serious sentence, serious punishment. I think it's too much, right? Too much. They are still kids. They are still young. Yeah, that's why some people say, no, I think the God is too much. 
You know why are, you, are they thinking like that? Because they see it, they read it from their own perspective. You understand? When you try to interpret Bible, you got to remember this. You got to see from God's perspective. Okay? God's perspective. Okay, today we read Matthew chapter 19. One day, one young man visited Jesus Christ. This young man asked this question, uh, chapter 19, verse 16. Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Okay, this young man, he was young. Young. How old is young? In his 20s, maybe, right? 30s? Okay, Helen, how old is young? 50s? <laughs> how old? 80. <laughs> 80. Okay. So, the Bible says he's a young man. Mm -hmm. He's young, which means he's, I think he's in his 20s, right? Maximum 30s, still young. And then, Bible says he was rich. One young and rich man visited Jesus. Okay, brothers and sisters, if you are young and rich, if you are young and rich, I know most of you, most of you are young, but not rich. <laughs> but if you are young and rich, with your youth, with your richness, great possessions, what do you want to do? If you are young and rich, like this, this man, he's young and rich, right? Look at the verse. Uh, verse 22. When the young man heard that, saying he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He was young and he had great possessions, right? Which means he's young. He, he, he was young and rich. If you were young and rich, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? With your youth, with your health, with your great possession, you want to serve the Lord? Please say yes. <laughs> Please say yes. You want to serve your community? You want, to, you want to help people who are in need? What do you want to do? Usually, okay, usually, if we are young and rich, usually we want to follow our own desires. You understand what I mean? Because we are rich and young, which means we can do everything what I want to do. Because we are young, and then we have enough money. <laughs> enough money. You can buy whatever you want to buy. You can eat whatever you want to eat. You can go whatever, wherever you want to go. So good, right? So good. So it's very easy to follow your own desires. But this young man, young rich man, he was different. Uh-oh, he was different. He, his interest was not on those kind of, you know, desired things. He asked to Jesus about eternal life. And then, you know what he said? From my youth, I have kept all those things, all those commandments, right? From my youth, I have kept all those commandments. Okay, young and rich man, keeping, the, keeping, the, keeping all those commandments. Was it easy or not easy? Not that easy. You understand? Not, because he was young and rich. But he said, he said, from my youth, I have kept, I have tried, 
Yeah, I have done my best, right? I have kept all these commandments. This is this young man. Yeah. Young ladies, young sisters, if you want to get married to somebody, you got to be this kind of <laughs> man. Right? He looks like very diligent. He looks like very faithful. Faithful. And then on top of that, he's young and rich. I think he's number one candidate. <laughs> number one candidate of groom, right? Oh. Yeah, in our perspective, in our perspective, he's very diligent. He's very uh, good. He's very religious. He lives very godly life, right? So in our eyes, this young man, he is very good. Am I right? Yeah, we can say that. But what about God's eyes? What about God's eyes? Brothers and sisters, this young man, he was trying to get the eternal life, right? By keeping the law from his uh, youth for many years. As we know, it was not easy, right? It was not easy. But his life was very different from other people. He was very religious. He was very godly. He was very diligent. But in God's eyes, you know what? Although he had kept all those commandments from his youth, although he had he had lived those kind of lives, but in God's eyes, he was not that great. Okay. When he asked about eternal life, Jesus said, look at the verse 21. No, not 21. Verse 17, so he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good, but one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. You know what Jesus said? If you want to enter the life, enter into life, keep the commandments. Jesus said, Keep the commandments, right? Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Book of Galatians chapter 3. Verse 10. Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Here, in the book of Galatians chapter 3, Apostle Paul says, As many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. If you are of the works of the law, if you are trying to keep the law, right, keep the commandments, you are under the curse. Am I right? It doesn't say when you break the law, then you are under the curse. It doesn't say that. But it says if you are of the works of the law, you are already under the curse, right? If you are trying to keep the law, trying to keep the commandments, you are under the curse. But in Matthew chapter 19, Jesus said, if you want to enter into life, what? Keep the commandments. What Jesus said, and what Apostle Paul said, I think it's different, right? 
You understand what I mean? Jesus said, keep the commandments to enter into life. But Apostle Paul said, no, if you are trying to keep the law, you are under the curse. Okay, let me ask you a question. Which one is right? What Jesus said and what Apostle Paul said. Which one is right? You want to say what Jesus said, right? <laughs> yeah, Jesus is right. He's always, always right. He's always right. But you know what? Apostle Paul, more than two-thirds of New Testament was written by Apostle Paul. You know that? You know that? Yeah, more than two-thirds of New Testament was written by that Apostle Paul. That Apostle Paul, one of the great, greatest teachers. Mm -hmm. One of the great, greatest apostles. That Apostle Paul, he said, if you are of the works of the law, you are under the curse. Which one is right? Both of them are right, right? Both of them are right. Okay, we got to understand this. Why Jesus Christ is telling him, keep the commandments. If you want to enter into life, Jesus said, keep the commandments, right? Keep the commandments. When Jesus said that, did he really want him to keep the law? For that reason, Jesus asked him to keep the law, keep the commandments. This young man asked him, okay, which one? You shall not murder. You shall not steal something from your neighbor. And you shall not commit adultery. Honor your father and mother. And then you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right? Yeah, these commandments. Keep the commandments. Jesus said, keep the commandments. Why? Did Jesus say keep the commandments? Did he really want him to keep the commandments? That's why he asked them to do that? You understand what my question is? Brothers and sisters, did Jesus Christ really want him to keep the commandments? Yes or no? Look at here. He said, keep the commandments, right? Keep those commandments. Then you can enter into life. You can get what you want to get, eternal life. Okay, for what reason Jesus asked this? Brothers and sisters, Romans chapter 3, it says, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in God's sight. You remember that? Romans chapter 3, verse 23. It says, By the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Jesus Christ, he knows no one can keep the law. No one could be justified by the deeds of the law. Am I right? But still, he said, keep the commandments. Why? Through the commandments, Jesus Christ wanted to teach him about his true identity, his true image. By the law is the knowledge of sin. Amen. Knowledge of sin. If you try to keep the law, if you really try to keep the law, you will, you will understand you are nothing but a sinner. But this is problem. Everyone says, I'm a sinner. Right? Everyone says, I'm a sinner. Because we all have sinned. Am I right? We all have sinned. Is there anyone who never sinned before? Raise your hand. Cat, have you ever sinned before? Even you? You look so innocent. <laughs> Even you? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, Helen, have you ever sinned before? You? 
you have no time, you have no time to do something bad because you've been through very tough times, right? Very busy life. <laughs> and we all have sinned. We all have sinned. That's why we all say, I'm a sinner. But you, you know what? There are some different kinds of sinners in the Bible. When you say, I'm a sinner, some people say, I'm a hundred percent of a sinner. And then some people say, some people think, although I'm a sinner, although I have sinned, right? But not 100%. Not 100%. Some part is still good. Some part is not good. Then half, half. Half, half. Mm -hmm. Whenever I go to, you know, the Harvest Restaurant, one of my favorite spots <laughs> in London, Harvest Restaurant, I'm in trouble. Whenever I go there, I'm in trouble. Which menu should I order? Because I want to eat chicken and I want to eat the back ribs as well. <laughs> the Harvest, don't order. Don't order the steaks, okay? Steaks, not good. Not good. Chicken, amazing, harvest, and back rib is really good. Always I want to eat both of them, but I can't order both of them, right? Both of them, okay, which one, which one, which one? Yeah, for someone like me, they prepare another menu. Half chicken, half back rib, right? Half, half, it's good, it's good. So... I usually order half half. And then I eat some leftovers from my wife. <laughs> okay, brothers and sisters, half half. Some people think half of my heart is good and half of my heart is not good. 50% sin, 50% good. No one says I'm 100% white. I'm 100% good. No one says that. I never met those kind of people, <laughs> right? But most of people think, yeah, I'm a sinner, I'm bad, but not, not fully. Yeah, I'm corrupted, but not completely. Not 100%, you understand? Not 100%. Why? Because we have sinned, but at the same time, we have done something good. Am I right? Yeah, I believed, I believe all of you have done something good. Have you ever helped someone who is, in help, who is in need? Have you ever helped? Yeah, I have done that many times. Trust me, trust me. So, we all have done something good. Not only simple thing, right? That's why we think like, okay, I'm a sinner, but not completely sinner. You understand? Not completely sinner. That is the point. That's the point. Some people who believe that they have so still some good part in their heart, they do not return to Jesus Christ. They do not rely on Jesus Christ completely. Why? They are still relying on themselves just like this young man. This young man. This young man, he answered, I have kept all those commandments from my youth. Is it true? Is it true? He answered when Jesus said, keep all these commandments. He said, I have kept it, right, from my youth. Is it true? You don't know? <laughs> when he answered that, Jesus said, okay, sounds good. So look at the verse. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 19. It's very interesting. When Jesus, when this young man answered that,
verse 20, the young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Okay, good, good. If you want to be perfect, go and sell what you have and give it to the poor and come and follow me. Mm -hmm. When Jesus said that, what happened? This young man, did he sell everything what he had? Did he sell? You know what he did? He just went away. He said, I have kept all these commandments from my youth, right? Okay, what, what of the commandments was what? Look at the verse 19. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, which means you can sell everything you have and then you can give it to your neighbor, right? But can he do that? Can he do that? But he still, he said, I have kept it. Is it true or liar? Lying, is it true or lying? Yeah. In his views, in his thought, I have kept it. But in God's views, in God's sight, he can. He's not the one who can love his neighbor as he loves himself. You understand. But he thinks, he believes, I have kept all those things from my youth. I'm pretty good. This is the problem. Brothers and sisters, everyone, in this world, there's no good one in this world. We all are corrupted. I know sometimes you have done something good. I know sometimes you help some people. But you know what? Your love, your goodness is not the genuine. It's not the genuine. You know what I mean? Let's say, if I have gold ring, gold ring, I have no gold ring, okay? But let's say, if I have gold ring, in my finger. Hey, brothers and sisters, look at it. This is gold. You know how much is this? Oh, it's so valuable, so precious. Oh, pastor, it looks so nice. It looks so pretty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then, after six months, you see it again, but it, the gold ring becomes white color. It was gold. It was gold color. But after six months, it became white color. Was it real gold? Genuine gold? Yes or no? No, pure gold, genuine gold, it doesn't change, right? The color of gold, it doesn't change, am I right? It lasts, it lasts, I cannot say forever, but it lasts long, <laughs> thousand, thousand years, am I right? Yeah. But if it changes, it's not the genuine. What about your love? What about your, your goodness? Yeah, you can help other people. But how many times you can help? Yeah, you can forgive your neighbor. You can forgive your brothers. But how many times you can forgive your neighbors? You can forgive your brothers. How many times? Seven times? Seven times? That's why Peter asked Jesus Christ, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times? His limit was seven, right? <laughs> That's why he asked him. Until seven times? But Jesus said, 70 times seven. Does that mean 490 times? No. No. Brothers and sisters, I know sometimes you did something good, right? But it doesn't last forever. It changes. Your good be behaviors, your patience, it changes, right? You know what that means? It's not a genuine. 
It's not genuine. It's not real, pure gold. God loves us. His love is pure. Why? He loves us forever. That's why it's pure. It's a genuine love. It's good. God is good. Why? He's good always. 24 hours, 365 days, right? He's good always, but are you good? Sometimes. Sometimes. Am I a good husband? Am I... Don't ask to someone, okay? Am I a good husband? I think yes, but sometimes. Sometimes. Are you a good friend? Are you a good friend? Yes, but sometimes, right? But God is good. God is good all the way, all the times. That's why we say He's good. That is a real goodness. But what about your goodness? Are you good always? Are you good always? Do you love your loving one always? No, no. Our love, our goodness is not pure. This young man, he looks like very good, right? But when Jesus said, okay, if you want to be perfect, go and sell what you have and follow me. You will have treasure in heaven. Can he sell it? No. No. Why? This is who he is. This is who he is. Who can throw a stone to him? Can you throw a stone to him? Among you who has no sin, let him throw a stone at him first. Is there anyone who can throw a stone at him first? Who can point at him? Point your finger at him. Who can do that? Is there anyone who can do that? No. Who can say, hey, you should, have, <laughs> you should have sold it. Who can sell it? Who can say that? Nobody, right? Why? This is who he is, and then this is who we are. This is who we are. But you know what? Sadly, this young man, he had a chance to admit about himself. Oh, I thought I was good. I thought I have kept all these commandments, right? For many years. But before Jesus Christ, his true image was revealed, right? Oh, I'm not the one who can love my neighbor as myself. Oh, this is me. Then, Jesus. What should I do? Jesus, what should I do? At that time, Jesus Christ could become his Savior. Brothers and sisters, who is Jesus? Yeah, Jesus Christ, he is our Savior. He was with this young man as a Savior, right? Yeah, from the beginning. He was always a savior. But when this young man believed himself, when this young man trusts himself, Jesus Christ cannot be a savior to this young man. Jesus Christ wanted to be a savior to this young man. That's why he said, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. See, can you keep it? Can you sell all you have? And then can you give it to the poor? And then can you follow me? You can't. This is who you are. So what? Surrender. So what? Give up. Surrender and give up. And I'll do, I will do something for you. That's what Jesus Christ wanted to tell him. But sadly, this young man, 
he left with a sorrowful heart, right? He left from Jesus Christ. Look at the verse 23. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Surely I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. When Jesus saw this young man left from himself, Jesus said, Rich man, it's hard for rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So his disciples asked him, What then? Who can be, who can be saved? Brothers and sisters, who can be saved? Who then can be saved? With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With man, it's impossible. With yourself, with yourself, it is impossible. Amen. With man entering kingdom of God, it's impossible. With the man, who is man? You. You are the man with yourself, with your own efforts, with your own trying, with your own diligence. With man, it is impossible. But with God, with God, all things are possible. Amen. Although we can keep the commandments, although we are not that diligent, Although we are not that good person, right? But with God, all things are possible. With God, because of God, we can enter the kingdom of God. Amen. This is the grace. This is the gospel. With man, this is impossible. Amen. But with God, all things are possible. You want to go into the kingdom of God? You want to be saved? You got to be with God. For that, you got to give up yourself. You got to give up your own efforts. Then you can rely on God only. With that God, all things are possible. Even you, even someone like us, we can enter the kingdom of God. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for this. In this world, there is no one who can love their neighbors as, as themselves, right? There is no one who can love their neighbors as they love themselves. But this is who we are, but don't be disappointed with God. We, that's why God sent us our Savior, Jesus Christ. And with this Jesus Christ, with this Savior, everything is possible. Camel going through the eye of the needle, it's impossible, right? But with God, everything is possible. <laughs> with God, you can go through the eye of the needle. Yeah, with God, you can go into the kingdom of God. With God, you can be saved. With God, you can be righteous. With God, you can be children of God. With God. With yourself, with man, everything is impossible. Amen? So, through the commandments, God is teaching us our true image. Let me show you Matthew, um, uh, Romans, book of Romans, chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 18. For I know that I know that in me that is in my flesh, 
nothing good dwells, for to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. Okay, in me, in my flesh, nothing good dwells, right? In me, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. To will is present. Okay, I know you have will. You have some intentions, right? You have some desires for doing good. To will is present with you, but how to perform. How to perform, I do not find. Okay, the will, to will is with you. You have desire, you have intentions, but you have no power for doing that. Yeah, just like this. I want to buy this and that, right? But the thing is, I have no money. <laughs> yeah, in a shopping center, I want to buy this and that. I want to buy this and that. But what if you do not have money? Can you buy it? No. Just like this. To will is with me. But how to perform, I do not find it. I have no source. I have no power to carry on. This is who we are. Through the commandments, through the law, God is teaching us this. Okay? And then when you realize that, at that time, you can give up yourself and then you can rely on Jesus Christ only. You can say, with man, with myself, this is impossible. But with you, Lord, because of your grace, I can be saved. Have mercy on me. You can say that. And then you will be saved through his grace. So this young man, in the eyes of us, in the eyes of we human beings, he looks very good. But in the eyes of God, it's not good. Why? He is trying to be saved. He is trying to get the eternal life with his own ways, right? With his own efforts, with his own good behaviors. That's why he is on the wrong way. To those persons, eternal life is too hard. Too hard. So through Matthew chapter 19, God is telling us, teaching us about how, what is the true way of being saved. Amen.